make a, an electric car perform just as well, if not better, than an existing, well-known petrol car. Mm. And the Lotus Salam is perfect because it was designed in the 60s when um, kind of crash resistance wasn't that important. And so it was really, really light. And this lightness is what makes the land so special. It makes the handling and the, the fun factor um, make them feel much more like a racing car. They're just really great handling. But often when you're doing a, a, an electric conversion, the the hardest part is keeping the weight of the whole system down. Mm. You've got some relatively heavy batteries plus motor, etc. And so what I worked out was that um, uh, an Elan motor, and in fact generally many car motors, weigh about 125 kilos. And so these five modules also weigh 125 kilos. Mm. And so I could effectively swap the motor for the batteries. So overall, this combination of five Tesla modules plus this 60 key kilogram motor came to the same weight as the original petrol drive system. So it maintained that lovely light weight. It was the most important thing because the, I suppose what Elans are particularly known for is their super fine handling. Uh, and, and that's why people like Gordon Murray use it as a benchmark to get the steering of their supercars right. You know, the actual feel of the steering, which is so important. On the road, you could feel every little bump and contour of the road back through the steering wheel. And on the racing track, you're in the situation where you're going around a bend and the beautiful thing about an Elan on track is it's very easy to make it four wheel drift. So you're, you're, you're balancing then the whole car with all four wheels are kind of drifting slightly and all you're balancing it is with the steering and your throttle. I had in my youth several of these cars and um, I remember first driving one uh, when I was an apprentice and uh, we used to go down to uh, one of the tracks, Goodwood, and uh, one of the apprentices had borrowed his dad's Elan. Yeah. It was the nearest thing I could imagine a racing car was like. Uh, but it's also great fun on, on narrow country roads. Driving a regular car can be quite scary. Whereas this one, because it's so narrow, can go into places quite safely. I also really wanted to show to myself and to others that EVs, which I really believe in, uh, can also be fun and efficient and lightweight because there's so many myths about EVs that they're heavy and they don't go very far and all this sort of thing and so if I could make an Elan which was as good as the original but with electric power it would have so many advantages main advantage is there's just one moving part so it's so much simpler uh, you just turn it on and go um, the other advantages are, are multiple for a start um, it's free to run. I yeah. charge it up from the PVs from the roof, and so um, it doesn't actually cost me anything to go any distance. Whereas before I converted it, a dirty little secret about these cars, although they're tiny and relatively efficient, they get really bad miles per gallon. This system, the, the, the motor, the batteries, things, are around about 90% efficient. Whereas a regular petrol car is only 30% efficient. So every time I went out in it, it was down to the petrol station, 20 quid in the car. Yeah. And it just, I thought, oh, I'll, I'll convert it to avoid that. Uh, and then apart from that, there's a silence. Because, okay, uh, a, an electric motor is silent, so you don't get the brum brum noises. Having all the experiences of driving, but in silence, is actually amazing. The, the last thing is the performance. You get, it's like being pushed from behind by a great big rubber band that just pushes you forward in silence. It's really transformative. I think there's a massive potential of taking classic cars like this and instead of them being garage queens which only come out on Sunday morning 
Sports for a little putt around the park and may even be banned in a few years' time because they're, they're throwing out so much horrible, you know, carcinogenic stuff out of their exhaust. Um, why not convert them into electric? Which means they could be used every day and not bug people, not pollute, just silently move around cities. So people will enjoy looking at them because a lot of them are very beautiful, you know, E-types and some of the Lotus and things like that. It's great to see them moving past. Because it only got 23 miles per gallon, the range was round about maximum would have been 180 miles. The range on this now is, depending on how you drive it, anything between 100 and 200 miles. So if you really boot it everywhere and drive faster than the original car, you'll probably only get 100 miles range. But if you just take it steady, normal, relaxed, you get up to 200 miles range. So, uh, and, and that combined with the fact that it doesn't actually cost you in petrol, is a major advantage uh, and one thing that's totally different from a petrol engine is that uh, a petrol engine is actually at least economical when it's going cross country you know up and down hills and twisting like that it, because it's always accelerating and decelerating um, whereas an electric car is actually really efficient in those conditions because every time it goes down a hill or slows down all the, all the, it's got regenerative braking, so all the energy goes back into the battery. You know, it's using, taking some energy and converting it into motion and transport, which has to be good, rather than, you know, digging up stuff from the ground and burning it into nothing, and making, in the, in the meantime, making, uh, you know, CO2. So, I, I, I really want, I fight against this misinformation, and so part of this project was kind of trying to prove that all those myths are totally wrong by making something that's both fun, more efficient, faster, better rate, all these kind of things, and do a direct comparison. And I really think this is better. I got in touch with the original owner, who's in his 70s, he's a pilot. Pilot, um, and he lives in Surrey and I got his details from, from the guy I bought it from. It's effectively one owner car. So I called him up because I also found some of his private, private letters in the, in the history. I said, look, I'll send these back to you. And he said, oh, great that you're getting it back going again because it was just rusting in the back of a garage. And we talked a bit about it. And then, th then he said, when will it be ready? I said, well, as soon as I've got the electric engine. In. And the phone went kind of quiet and he said you what I said yeah I'm converting it to electric you're doing what to my car and he almost put the phone down on it the, the conversation having been chatty up to that point suddenly went almost dead mm. and he, he was furious he said you know that's you can't do that to my car that's terrible mm. and then what I've been finding on social media is it's a mom like thing some people love the idea of making a car which will last another 50 years and be more efficient and, and be cheap to run and you can use it as an everyday car. That's one side. This is from Milan owners. Okay. The other half, or I'm not sure what the percentage is, but the other group of people think this is absolute sacrilege. Not quite to the point of being sent death threats, but <laughs> some really, really yes. nasty comments yeah. on, on places like Facebook of, you know, that is crazy, you stupid man, you spoiled a, a historic vehicle. It mimics it fairly well. My objective was to try and get the same kind of performance. I didn't want it much more powerful, but I didn't want it less powerful um, because Elan is a beautifully set up car in the first place. Um, it, you know, it's it's not particularly powerful, but it gets its speed and handling through its light weight. 
And so by comparison to the um, original car, the, the main thing is it's got so much more torque. So, uh, but it's got about the same amount of power. But what that means from a driving point of view is that um, in first and second, the acceleration is just amazing. I mean, it's the, the, the limiting factor is the wheel spin. Okay, and, and you can have a lot of fun with that if you want to hoon around. And one thing where the electric is actually better is because you don't have to worry about changing gear and clutches, you can really concentrate on what it's doing within a corner. Yeah. So for example, you know, a really fast corner, you can you can kind of balance the front and rear drift so much easier with the control of the electric motor which is so much more sensitive than a twin cam, which is very peaky. And so from a handling point of view, I actually think it's better. So simplify, yes. Instead of all those valves and things and pistons moving up and down and carburetors which used to flood and had all these little, nasty little components which any one of them could go wrong and spoil the engine and often did, you've got one moving part, the rotor in the, in the motor, that's all, so simplified. Added lightness, yeah, it's lighter and the balance is just the same. So I think Colin would actually appreciate it. same cost as a is a well-tuned and made Elan so it fulfills that uh, criteria you know it, it, the the battery and the motors effectively have replaced a, a rebuilt engine and so the costs are sensible I was just at the stage of finalising the wiring. Uh, I, just before lockdown, I'd take me for its very first gentle drive round, and then it was a lockdown. So I knew it basically worked, but uh, I needed to uh, finish it off. And so lockdown was a perfect finishing project. Uh, so all the wiring and all the checking and all the multimetering and stuff was all done in lockdown. Mm -hmm. 